buenos dias, good morning, it's Friday, thank goodness, however, we've got one of those big, expensive, everybody is there meeting, we're calling them war room meetings, big deal, so, and I'm actually coming to work late, all my kids had the day off today, and so I slept in this morning, a little bit, um, I feel well rested for once, <laughs> so that's good. So I gotta, I gotta get inside. So um, I had a couple thoughts. One, I had was thinking. Remember yesterday, I talked about the um, manhood, manliness, and the authentic expression of it. And uh, the guy in the book talks about the different movies that have become so successful. Things like Saving Private Ryan, um, Braveheart, Gladiator. Those are been made successful, arguably, by the male contingent a male group of people. Um, they have characters, they have ideas, they have concepts in them that we like as men. Um, admittedly, there's some real entertainment value to, there too, but the characters in there exhibit qualities that we like, um, qualities that, you know, that we want to have. Um, and I was thinking about Lord of the Rings and how much I like Lord of the Rings, and I was thinking about the different characters and how so many girls and women that I've talked to really like Legolas. And Guys like Legolas too, but it's not in the same sort of infatuation. We're like, oh yeah, he's pretty, he's cool. But I think that, now I could be wrong, but I think that more men would rather be Aragorn than Legolas. Because Aragorn, while Legolas does some cool things, there's a lot of um, very real expression of what it means to be a man and what Aragorn does. Um, so it's, uh, I think, I think that's, I think that's probably true. That men would rather be Aragorn than Legolas. So yesterday in the news here in Seattle, there was a church, and you can Google this church. They have been rather controversial. Um, it's called Mars Hill Church. They have a couple different uh, churches around the area. Um, the pastor there talks about sex and all of the kinds of things from the pulpit, not in, a, not in a bad way, but just talks about subjects that other people tend to shy away from. I believe that if he does a Q&A, he actually takes tweets or... Um, text messages so he can answer those questions. He's been on the news and that kind of stuff. So a lot of people like Mars Hill Church, but a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't. So yesterday it came out in the news that one of the members of the church um, had slept with his fiance and essentially a letter was sent. And I'm not sure if the letter was sent to the leaders or if it was the leaders and the church. I don't think it was the entire congregation. I believe it was just the leaders and council members. Basically that this person is an unrepentant sin and um, should not be, it basically should be shunned. And I have a real problem with that. Now, I don't know the whole story. Okay, I don't know, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't exactly know how it was handled. The Bible does talk about how to handle things. If you have an issue with your brother, that you go to him first, and then if that doesn't work, you t you bring one or two other people, and and talk to them about it. And then if that doesn't work, you, then you talk to the basically talk to the elders in the church. So it's it's more about the relational aspect and, and dealing with it that way. Um, but it never once um, it, it does say to I can't remember the passage that they quote, but I think it's out of context where they basically the the Bible basically talks about um, not allowing this person to be. Uh, to be in the church. I can't remember. I don't want to misquote it because it, it, as I'm talking about it now, it sounds like it's it's really negative and like, oh, well, we've got to shun the sinner. Um, I will admit that I don't know the whole story. I don't know all the background. Um, regardless, it, it seemed like based on what I was, what I read, which was both the news story and the letter that went out, um, that there was a lot of shame involved in that. And the person who was, you know, in this case, um, the object of their shunning or, or whatever. Um, I just can't imagine ever wanting to go to church again because of that happening. Um, and you know, whether you're a believer or not, whether you think that premarital sex is okay or not, um, in, in that context in a Christian church and with somebody who's a Christian, um, the expectation is you are going to save yourself from marriage. Whether you had sex before marriage before, your life in Christ, as you're walking um, your life in Christ out, the you're expected to have that kind of standard. So I don't know if what the guy did was, um, you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, they set themselves up to be in a place where they were alone and one thing led to another and then they ended up having sex. So I don't know if it was just, because everybody's had those experiences where it's like in the heat of passion, you make different decisions 
um, than you would if you don't let yourself go there. And so I think that that's possible to avoid, you know, going there. Um, or if this was an ongoing thing with he and his fiance, and he was, um, as the letter puts it, unrepentant. Um, it's, it's, there's, there's so many things that play into this, and it sounds so churchy. Um, and I have my own opinion on how I think it should have been handled. But like I said, I don't know exactly how it was handled. All I know is how it reads and how it sounds is like there's a lot of shame involved. And the, ch and church, the church in general, at large, I'm not, I'm not talking about um, the born-again churches. I'm not talking about fundamental. I'm talking about the Christian church at large has done a very poor job of handling sex and talking about sex. It is, it's an important issue. And the fact that everybody else in culture is talking about sex um, it should kind of be a clue, I think, to the church at large that we need to talk about sex. We need to talk about what it, what it is. We need to talk about what's, you know, wh what issues do people deal with? What are, what are the problems that are going on? What are good things? What does the Bible say about this or that? It, it needs to be discussed and it needs to not, it needs to stop being this taboo subject that we thought, oh, oh, well, we can't, oh, well, we better not talk about mm, mm, sex. Mm, uh. Everybody knows that as an adult, you're going to have sex. If you're married and you have kids, you've had sex. If you have three kids, you've probably had sex more than three times. So it's out there. We need to be talking about it. And we need to do it in a way that there is no shame. We need to talk about it where we're not condemning people, where we're just speaking the truth. Um, so it's uh, it's obviously a hot topic for me. I have no problem talking about it. It's one of my favorite subjects, mostly because once you get people to open up, you can discover all kinds of things. Um, and, and they start sharing, and, and you get into some real stuff. When I say they're sharing all kinds of things, I'm talking about the deep stuff that really matters in life. It gets beyond just the, oh, work sucks, and I'm having a hard time with my kids. You get it, you start getting down into the core of who people are, and I think that that's important. So, longer video today. Obviously, a passionate uh, topic that I feel passionate about. I better get into work, otherwise I'm going to be late for that meeting. This has been The Big JB. You can follow me on Twitter, at Voice of the Big JB. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Have an awesome weekend. See everybody on Monday. Bye.